area, so it's the circulation per unit area in the limit in which the area goes, zero. An algorithm for calculating it is del cross A. So his question is, is there a similar thing for del squared? What's the significance of del squared and so on? Then directly, it's a scalar operator, del dot L, del, but I'd like to mention though that the reason the del squared operator appears is very profound and very deep, very, very deep really buried in differential geometry. The del squared operator, or rather the generalization of the del squared operator to complicated spaces, is a very, very basic property. It probes very basic properties of the space itself. So it, I know it's an unsatisfactory answer at the moment, but let me, okay, let me, let me not leave it at that. Let me give you a physical picture of why the del squared operator has the kind of role that it plays. Let's go back to electrostatics. What it does and what the del squared does. A good digression. Good to understand that. Uh, oh, incidentally, just a minute. If you didn't have time dependent fields, but you had only electrostatics, then of course you know this goes away. And you've got del squared phi is minus rho over epsilon naught. Imagine for a minute rho is time independent, j is time independent. What do you call that equation? Poisson's equation. That's the fundamental equation of electrostatics. And what's the primary property of a charge free region where del squared phi is zero? There are no absolute maxima or minima. This is the primary property. And you have the mean value theorem. And it says the value of the field at any point where del squared phi is zero, the value of this phi at any point is the arithmetic mean of all points, the values at all points symmetrically situated about. Whenever you have Laplace's equation, that's true. That's the statement I made. Okay. Of course, you put a source, it's no longer true. But what I'm trying to bring out here is the significance of the Laplacian operator. Now, when you say del squared phi equal to zero, it says phi is a function, an eigenfunction of the del squared operator with zero eigenvalue. It's called a harmonic function. And the question is, what's so harmonic about it? And the answer I'm giving is that this function is such that Every solution of Laplace's equation is such that the value of the function at any point is the arithmetic average of the values at points symmetrically situated about it, whatever be the number of dimensions. Well, let, me, let me go one step further back. Let's look at Laplace's equation in one dimension. That's my Laplace equation in one dimension. Just the second derivative is zero. Now, what's, what's the solution to this equation? A linear equation. So it tells you that phi equal to kx plus b. So let's plot this phi as a function of x. What it is. What's so special about a straight line? I want the value at every point as the slope is constant. What does it lack? Well, the first derivative is non-zero. It has no maximum or minimum, which has been true. But even functions which are not straight lines will have no. What does it lack? Its first derivative is non-zero in general, but the second derivative is identically zero. So what does the second derivative measure? Curvature. It has no curvature. This function has no curvature. So the consequence of that is that if you took the value at any point here, it is guaranteed to be the arithmetic mean of values symmetrically situated about it, of this value and this value. So if this is x and this is x minus epsilon, x plus epsilon, you're absolutely guaranteed that f of x equal to f of x plus epsilon plus f of x minus epsilon divided by 2. You're guaranteed that. On the other hand, if the function had curvature, then if it had curvature like this, the value here is smaller. The value at this point is larger than the arithmetic mean. And if it were curved the other way, the value of the is larger than, uh, is smaller than the value within the arithmetic mean. Only if the curvature is identically zero do you get this mean value problem. And of course, it doesn't take long to realize that I could write this as f of x plus epsilon minus twice f of x, which I'll write as f of x, minus f of x, minus f of x, minus epsilon. And that's equal to 0. For good luck, I divide this by epsilon. 
and this is of course the derivative from the right and this is the derivative from the left and I divide by one more epsilon and take the limit and what derivative do I get? The second derivative and that's exactly this. So you see a harmonic function, this is a harmonic function in one dimension, only a straight line. But the guarantee, the value at any point is the arithmetic average of points on either side. Now two or three dimensions, in two dimensions for example, the same property would translate to something much more interesting. Because if you have d2 phi over dx2 plus d2 phi over dy2 equal to zero, then of course if you put phi equal to ax plus b plus cy plus d, this is true. That's a trivial case. But you have more interesting possibilities. It's possible that the x derivative d2 phi over dx2 is some quantity and the y derivative is minus that. So the functions don't have to be linear, but they could still satisfy this function. And it's not very hard to see if I did the same trick as what I did there, that the value at any point is the arithmetic mean of the value here, 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 and here. I take these four points, x minus epsilon, x plus epsilon, y minus epsilon, y plus epsilon, and divide by four after summing them, and I would end up with that equation to the limit. But then the del squared operator is spherically invariant. It's a scalar operator. So I could in fact have taken four points, this, 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 and this. And I would still have this. I take all these eight points and do one eight, and I'd still have it. And in fact, I could go the whole hog and take all points on this circle and divide by the length of the circle, and I would have a value in here. That's the harmonic problem. And in three dimensions, it's a sphere. As you know, this is the property of harmonic functions, the mean value problem, any number of dimensions. So that's what is so basic about the del squared operator. Its eigenfunctions give you the generalization of a function without curvature in one dimension. It satisfies this mean value problem. So that's why it is so special. It has other reasons why this is very particular. In fact, if you know the spectrum of a Laplacian operator in a domain, you actually know everything about the domain in some sense. So that's the reason it is a very basic probe. By the way, in electrostatics, this has the consequence that a function which satisfies this cannot have a maximum here. Because it can't be larger than all these values and still be its average. Your average. It can't have an absolute minimum here. And the consequence of that is that in a charge-free region, you cannot put a charge held together by electrostatic forces alone and expect it to be in stable equilibrium. Could be equilibrium but unstable. Some of these terms would be positive, some would be negative. If it's an absolute minimum, all of them would have to be positive and they can't add up to zero. If it's an absolute maximum, all of them would be negative, they can't add up to zero. So you'd always have saddle points, some positive, some, some negative, and you'd have unstable equilibrium. What's that theorem called? Earnshaw's theorem. It just says the del squared function which satisfies the Laplace's equation can't have an absolute maximum. Okay. So let's come back to where we were. 